Right, let's start with mi mixing wools. Now, as you can imagine, mixing these two will just make um, a variation of the rust fox brown or the white. So you're in charge of how um, how this this should look like. So there, these are um, these two are roughly the same quantity. So what you need to do is you lay them on top of each other, and this is a good tutorial for mixing any kind of wool. You lay them on top of each other and then you tear them apart with your thumb and whatever other finger you want to use. And what's really important, because these are, even though these are butts and the wool is already sort of crisscrossed, keep them in the same direction. So when you, if you tear them that way, you also put them on top of each other like that again. So what you're not doing is you're not putting it like that. You're keeping it running in the same direction. And that makes a nice flat mix. Now you can mix it so thoroughly that at the end of it, you have a really, really even colored um, mix, or you can keep it mottled. It depends how you want um, the end effect to be. So what you're actually doing is you're, you're not uh, severing the fi fibers, you're teasing them apart, you're letting them slither away so that you're mixing them together. And that way um, you can create a whole new color mix. So this works with um, different colors as well. So if you, if you want to make an orange and you haven't got orange, but you've got yellow and, um, and red, then you can mix the two together and you can make orange. And that works obviously across the whole color palette. So make gray from black and white, make green from blue and yellow, make purple from red and blue. And, um, and if you mix all the colors together, you just get a murky brown, just, just, you do with paint. So this has made um, quite a nice sort of color mix. I love this mix, particularly if you're making any other um, animals. Uh, it's often found in dogs, whether that is Jack Russell's or um, um, even even sort of in um, maybe in Labradoodles, in, I'm just trying to think hard, it might even be in, in a yellow lab where, where they so sometimes have a bit of a gingery color coming through. It's a really, really good color to use. Now, if you have this color and you think, oh, that's turned out a bit light, I wanted it to be much darker, then just add a little bit more of the color into it that you want it to be stronger off. So it's as simple as that. You can actually um, change the color by just adding more of the other color in. If you imagine you mix paint and you uh, want to make a pale pink from white and red, you just know that you have to keep adding more white to make it nice and pale. And if it gets too um, pale, then you add a little bit more of the red in. So it's it, it's sort of working um, how how you want the color to be. And um, of course, similarly, if, if you think this is too dark, then just take a little bit of white and mix this in. What I've been really keen to do is that I've got um, colors here that you can, that, that sort of in terms of the type of the fiber um, work um, with, with you by mixing it so they're not they're not like diff two different fibers the, the these two are obviously in New Zealand anyway so they're the same type of wool but you have a chance um, of, of mixing them together without um, them not wanting to mix if you see what I mean so that um, is now the difference between the two of them making one darker and one lighter and that is a really good color to um, add onto your pony if you're giving it brown flecks so you make the base white and then you're giving it brown flecks or maybe you just want it to be this color all together and give it a white mane like some of the ponies that we've like this this um, here one here that we've seen um, on the picture this one here that has got oh I've got a wet set of instructions now because I've got my bowl here ready for the wings and there must have been a bit of a water drop. No, the bowl's not leaking. Um, so sorry about this, got wet instructions now. So you can make a mix for this uh, particular pony um, um, and so on. So I'm going to move this out of the way because that's what happens when you work with well, wet well. Now, in terms of mixing tops, it works very much the same way. So you um, you can um, break off a little bit off the top. So do this lengthways rather than splitting it from the from this way. Do it lengthways because especially if you're making a tail or a mane, you want to maintain that length. 
and then you can uh, use a little bit of another color. Again, you can just mix it, let the fiber slither away from each other so you're teasing it apart rather than tearing the fiber. Uh, severing the fiber and that way you can make a mix sometimes um, especially if you're doing manes on ponies they actually have got this would be a perfect mix where you've got one part that's really dark and brown and then it sort of gradually goes into a lighter color that is something that can can um, easily happen on ponies just study a picture if you want to follow a particular model or maybe you've got a pony at home and you know exactly what you're doing anyway and um, and that way you can make a mix um, with two tops. Again, add more of one or the other color if you need it to be um, more or the other color. And then what you can also do is you can mix um, a top with a bat. So this New Zealand Merino, even though it looks short fiber, it's actually in itself is quite a long fiber. So you can mix the two together. It's probably a bit too much. By just the main thing is that you're keeping these fibers running uh, parallel. Um, so don't crisscross them, just keep them running in the same direction, and that way you will get a nice um, even mix. Sometimes, if you've mixed in too much, you can just take it out, as I have done here, because you might just want a sort of a little hint of, of ginger in there. Um, and you just keep doing that until you've got the right mix for your little. Um, creature that you're making and then you can attach it accordingly and I will also just show you very quickly how to attach it because I've got a pony here that's waiting for a tail and a mane for that matter so mix it add a little bit more of one or the other color if need be and um, and that way you you have plenty of um, of tops here to give your pony a nice um, bushy mane and a nice uh, long tail as well. So that's um, how I've mixed the tops now. If you have got carders, then you can use your carders as well. Um, I've got one. I've got one of each size. In fact, I don't. I don't even think we sell one of these. But anyway, that's what I've got. Um, we do sell a couple of um, these, so I'm just going to show you. You might have to use a smaller quantity and definitely have a clean carder, which I haven't even got. Take all the old fibers out because they do get mixed otherwise. And then all you're doing is you're just literally carding it from one to the other. Take it off and get a nice long mix. There you go. And, um, and that mixes it a lot more thoroughly as well. You can use that uh, with tops as well. So if you have got a carder, then use that. If you've only got one carder, you can do what we call flick carding. And um, that basically means that you're holding it in one hand and you're just flicking it off with um, your carder to take it onto the other one. So that is how you mix the wool and you can see that the mixing is now becoming really really um, thorough so now I've just got to straighten the fibers out again and that you can do by um, pulling the wool so now I've got a very very thorough mix between the two colors where you can where it's almost turned into a beige you can hardly see that ginger that I've mixed into it whereas before it was more streaky like that so that is what you can do with carders and then when you've got your pony ready to have a, a tail attached, um, then you um, you obviously attach the tail, tease it out a little bit, and then um, put it to the back of the pony, like this. You can take some of the longer fibers out. Use your felting needle and stab it into its bum. Keep that sort of quite concentrated where you're stabbing it in so you're not, f not having too flat an area there. And stab it in for now, and then you can cover the join up in a minute. So just make sure that it's on and that the tail looks right here. And then all the wool here on the top, um, you you can um, cover up with a bit of wool. You could give it a, a brown spot on, on the back of the bum here now. So you could actually use some of the wool that you've mixed or I've mixed earlier. I can just put on there and this is how you would attach um, a spot. Maybe make it, make it a bit lopsided. It always looks nice when they're not completely symmetrical. 
and that way you can do two things add a patch of wool and also add um, add a patch of brown but also cover the join where the tail was attached but you could also just use white wool to cover um, that join up so that it it um, it isn't so obvious that you've just attached a tail so that's like adding a spot um, onto the pony and giving it its tail and then for the mane um, mix another batch of wool go so on here, for example, where it's got this really dark uh, ginger color, that's where you might want the mane to be um, a lot more ginger than white. So make a nice um, batch of, of a darker ginger color mane there. And then uh, where it's just white, the mane could also just be white. So that's, um, and, and what with ponies, what you often find is that they have the mane hanging to one side. So you can, um, obviously you don't have to have it exactly like a middle parting and have it hanging down. And what I have done is because the wool is actually not long enough to have a, to fasten it in the middle and then have it hanging down e each side or fold it over to hang it down on, on one side. I just attach it at the top. So, um, put the put the top so that it's here and then just felt it on uh, you may want a couple of, of sometimes they have sort of a couple of strands hanging out the other side so I'm attaching the, the the mane here onto the side of the head you will have to just stab into it going along it just so that it, it's actually the wool is not heavy enough to hang down so you will have to just stab along um, the, where it's hanging down and then give your pony a nice a nice fringe as well use that main wool to do it the the wool as in the main m um, as an m a n e um, rather than m i n and that way you can give it a nice fringe as well by having it sort of hanging down its face you can see already just by doing this you you um you finish your pony off and gives it a really nice look again you might have to just stab a little bit into it but don't fasten it on just allow it so that it's actually hanging um over its face rather than um sticking up like a, like a mohican and that's basically how you mix wool and how you attach um, a tail and mane onto the horse and um, and I hope that has um, helped you get your little pony looking a little bit more pony like. <laughs>